All right, so welcome to another episode of the Deals for Dennis podcast. And today from Huntington Beach, California, uh, that sounds so nice right now because it was <laughs> freezing here this morning and uh, outside of Boston, it was actually snowing and I'm not mentally ready for that. Um, mm -hmm. So we have Tiffany Wen, MBA, right? And Kimberly Wen, DDS. Yes. Did I say your last names right? You yeah. did, yes. Very well done. I'm, I'm not just a pretty face. I did my research. Yeah. So, um, all right, we got to a good start there. So, um, they are from Asperdent, and it is a cloud-based practice management software program. If you go to Deals for Dennis, you'll get a deal of 30% off implementation fees, two months of free subscription, and unlimited on-demand support. That's awesome. So, tell me a little bit about your journey and all about Asperdent. All right, so I guess the journey starts um, when Kimberly and I were working together. This was back in, I want to say like 2015. So at the time, we were growing the practices, um, really filling out the days, bringing on more doctors. It was a huge running hustle and bustle machine. And once we tapped out the capacity, we started to think, okay, what else can we do aside from like renovate and bring in more rooms? Um, what else can we do to attract, you know, more patients to make everything run more smoothly in the office? And so the first thing that we looked at was the practice management software. We wanted to upgrade because we, and we wanted a cloud system. We actually wanted to go cloud, believe it or not, more than a decade ago, because we're two locations. It was much easier for us and our team to be able to access all the information. And so that started our search, that started Actually, our quest. It was funny because um, Kimberly had, I think she had been looking at practice management software to switch because at that time um, she had been using the same practice management software in her practice for I think like 15 years. Yeah, for a long yeah. time, so server-based, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. And I think when, when you first opened the practice, it was the most advanced one at the time, mm -hmm. but that was 15 years ago. And when you're using the same thing for over a decade, you know, it gets, it gets a little bit clunky. Um, so <laughs> she was telling me how we should go cloud. And that last time she tried this search was at a convention 10 years ago when she went up to, you know, the big practice management software companies and she would ask them like, oh, do you have, do you have a cloud version in the works? Mm -hmm. And at this point, I mean, like people were kind of just getting used to cloud storage of any sort, like people are really I think trusted. they looked at me and thought I was crazy, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. back then there wasn't something that was available, but um, moving it forward, we started, we really just wanted to be able to switch to something. And we thought there has to be something out there by now. And we did. So we did about a demo, demo. a month. Yeah. yeah, we did. Um, I think it's called market research in retrospect. But at the time, we were just demoing it. So we did month after month. And six months into demo, uh, that demo year, we started. started yeah. yeah. And it became a joke. I mean, we would just kind of look at each other like, we can, we can do we could this. Do, we could do yeah, this. Yeah, like, yeah, if we were to do it, we yeah. would do it like this and yeah. this. And it was total joke but then um as we did three more months of demos we started to seriously look at each other and say okay we're doing this maybe we should <laughs> actually do this and how do we make it happen mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and we went out and had our tech team put together mm -hmm. by a good friend and colleague um who his whole entire career has been based in tech and the startup scene so sold multiple companies to facebook um, launched facebook for android um, did a lot of cool things and at this time we caught him at a very good moment because he had just sold his latest company an AI one to Facebook and he was advising so we got someone who's been a tech entrepreneur veteran who's just kind of bored and wants inspiration helping us launch this new product that we were putting together and how long have has Asper Dow been out when did you first found uh, start it 2017. Okay, so 2017. So you were both practicing in the same office. Um, uh, uh, Kimberly, you're your yeah, dentist, yeah, and Tiffany, still, you're running. Yeah, so we still have the practices and okay. um, have other dentists um, at the office. They run themselves yeah. by now, so yeah. it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
um, but that's how you met. You you were in yes. working in the same <laughs> in the same you, office. Yeah. He's the clinician, and I did the business end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, that's, that's and, like you see, you know, the MBA and the DDS, so that works. Yeah. Perfect combo. So <laughs> now, so Tiffany, you're an MBA. Did that like totally change your way that you look at the world becoming an MBA? Because like, you Am know, I corporate and boring now, is that what you're asking? <laughs> no, like, do you actually like when you walk into a restaurant, like I see food and, um, oh, you know, the, like, do you see like yeah. supplies and overhead and, and um, <laughs> how efficiency of how the workflow is and kind of yeah. analyze everything like that? Actually, for right now, for restaurants, it's funny that you say that because everyone has limited seating, much more limited, mm -hmm. right? So the big question for restaurants is actually a very similar one to the dental practice. But if you only have a certain number of chairs, how do you increase the check size per table, mm -hmm. right? Because you only have so many reservations to give out. And if it's first come, first serve, how do you release the first tables to a subset that would likely um, pay more to be there? But anyway, yeah, the MBA does kind of change my perspective. See, I would just look at the beer menu. I wouldn't even <laughs> notice all that stuff. Um, the other good thing about being the MBA is when we did the software, that was another thing that Tiffany brought to the whole software where people can actually see it, right? They can see the feedback. So the team yep. has the information. So what, you know, the analytics, if you will, now the team has that information right in front of them and it's real live time. So whatever the number for an office oh, goal might be. Yeah, yeah, for the so practice she, yeah, goal. So she would pull that into that. So let's say that yeah. office goal is uh, 5,000 a day or 10,000 a day. But the team can see exactly what happens when there are changes in the schedule. So mm -hmm. what, um, what Kimberly's saying is, um, you know those production collection schools that you have for the practice? Um, if you're running your dental practice like a business, like any typical other business, the goals would be at the forefront. You know, morning huddles, you would talk about your production goals, how you can meet them and whatnot. Um, but for most practices and all of clients that we speak with, um, their goals are discussed, but not kind of at the forefront in a casual way like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I mean, it's a known practice that if you, think about something and track about something, just having it there in your mind makes you more likely to meet that goal because you're yeah. thinking on some level, you know, we're not like going out and um, asking people to overbook or anything like that. But just if you kind of have it in the back of your mind, then you can say like, oh, I'm short from goal by a few hundred dollars. Let's try to see if this mm -hmm. patient wants fluoride and like and, the next, you know, just yeah. little things here. And, and for the young dentist, that's really important because now they have a scoreboard, right? They have yeah. a or they know how they are doing and especially a young dentist coming in and if they have their practice you know we were talking about overhead that's important to them like how do you know what do I need to do but also if they're in the back doing the dentistry wouldn't it be nice if their front team were also very aware it's not you don't have to wait till the end of the day to see what your scores are you mm -hmm. have yeah you it's like a game it. yeah, so yeah it's, real time yeah it's real yeah. time it's more fun and let's say for instance too um they can also help patients because the team now mm -hmm. is very aware of everything that's going on without like okay how did we do what what do we need to do do we have to look forward to this and this now it's the scores are there and at the end of the day if they meet their goals that they set out for themselves they'll actually say you had go and it, it's, yeah and so it makes it fun Mm -hmm. It's like a little like, confetti that goes down yeah. if you meet your goals for production and collections. Um, I mean, if they're in a non-intrusive way, it's not like annoying and it'll get in the way, but it's definitely there just kind of in the back of the program where if you glance at it, you'll see the numbers and it'll be on your mind. And we want it to powerful, but fun at the same time and not like make work like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to work, but rather than, hey, I get feedback and I feel accomplished. Yeah. So it's nice to know that you're mm -hmm. on the right track. Mm -hmm. So w within your, your platform, you can set goals and, and certain key performance indicators. Um, and do, do you have like a nice dashboard where you can yes. track all this? I'm a sucker for a nice dashboard. So yes. I love, I love yes. a dashboard. Yes. Um, so are we. But, <laughs> but I, I like, um, how you are making it fun because a lot of this is staff onboarding mm -hmm. getting the staff on board with reaching these goals is just as important as yeah. um the clinician so if you can 
um, get the staff on board with the reason why we're checking, you know, treatment plan acceptance rate or reappointment rate, or like you said, how many fluoride treatments we're doing and then kind of make it, you know, fun for them when we do reach the goals, then they'll, it will be, like you said, in the back of their mind and they will try to reach those goals. I'll be more engaged. Um, more yeah. engaged. And um, uh, so when I, when I, I think staff onboarding is so important. So um, have you made that like a, a kind of a priority of your, um, of your platform and um, um, you know, making this yeah. feels fun? So yeah. staff onboarding to be able to use Aspro Dental, it's very, very quick. And I'll use an example. So um, amongst our clients is um, a dental company that does mobile clinics every mm -hmm. month or so, pre-COVID, of course. We stress test how easy yes. it was because we figured, okay, it's one thing to say, it's super easy to learn and use, mm -hmm. but what does that really mean? You hear it so much. It's one of those things that's gotten really saturated. So um, one of our clients, the one that yeah, does so, the mobile clinics. So they're volunteers. So these people are non-dental people. They show up, some of them, right? Uh, because they want to go into dentistry. You so have some, your dentist and your hygienist. Yes. Um, who and do, your assistants. Right. But then a lot of the mm -hmm. volunteers might just be students or, you know, pre dental Who want to go into dentistry, mm -hmm. right? So then they come in and they have no idea. They don't know what 3MLB no, yeah. is. They have no idea mm -hmm. what uh, any of the surfaces. So they need to be able to learn this very, very quickly. And within five to 10 minutes, we can show them how to use it and they're up and going. So we think that's wonderful. Um, when and even, even the doctors though, mm -hmm. I mean, they're so busy and they're volunteering for these dental events on mm -hmm. their weekends. So it's not like they're gonna come in an hour earlier mm -hmm. or a few days earlier to do a training session and kind of use the software. Um, mm -hmm. They show up like 15 minutes mm -hmm. before the first mm -hmm. patient mm -hmm. and we have to get the docs up and running with, you know, here's how you put your clinical note. Mm -hmm. Here's how you verify this treatment you mm -hmm. did and look at your x-rays and stuff and we're able to get them up and going in in that quarter quarter of an hour and you know how you were saying you love the dashboard us mm -hmm. too we don't even our dashboard idea is not just in the kpis that you're talking about no that's a good point because when you think dashboard you mm -hmm. think the business metrics mm -hmm. right like right. how are you doing on collections and whatnot but what about like for the clinicians mm -hmm. what would you consider a clinical dashboard yeah, I would want to see, um, you know, how I'm doing with, um, um, you know, my treatment acceptance rate, um, what procedures I've done, um, what patients, you know, reappointed, um, all those um, types of KPIs. And how about, let's say, for instance, the usual hygiene checks, right? You go in and most yep. dentists, when they do a hygiene check, they have anywhere, probably for most dentists, anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so when you go in there, She's here's your patient. hygienist, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but really, because you, you know, you, that dentist just now a patient, right? Mm -hmm. so now they're going in to, to do a hygiene. And sometimes you have one, but sometimes you have two or more in an hour. So you know that as a dentist, you have to go in and do it really, really well. Well, you need a dashboard that within that basically, five like a to patient 10 minutes, dashboard. Yes, mm -hmm. you can see everything, right? Mm -hmm. And I On think that most dentists would want to see the perio chart they would yep. want to see as far as the teeth they would want to see as far as the treatment plan and the priority of that treatment plan what was on it and what wasn't done what are we watching and what are is it priority one two or three we would want to see our treatment notes we would want to see all of that and we want to be able to see it just like that without She's, like switching back yeah and forth so you've on counted what four things perio Yep, charting. Um, tooth chart, the treatment Priorities. plans, uh -huh. and clinical notes. The yes, four yes, and even x-rays, right? So we want to be able to see all of that without clicking, 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 which mm -hmm. is what we were I think she's traumatized from um, <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm there were frustrated when right? there were paper charts mm -hmm. right there would be four physical different pages yeah. for your perio mm -hmm. a different whole other page for you know the treatment plan and then another one for your clinical mm -hmm. notes 
Um, and then the first generation of practice management software. Yeah, but it didn't get better, right? Yeah, the, the legacy versions <laughs> yeah. that we all started with 15 years mm -hmm. ago, right? Mm -hmm. Or more. <laughs> basically took that paper format and put it on a computer. So there right. are people, one page for Perio, one page, and it's like flipping between different tabs mm -hmm. on your browser. Mm -hmm. So what we- I'm embarrassed to say that the art, so my practice has been around since 1974. Uh, I haven't been there that Aww. long, but um, <laughs> I was going to say, wait, so, I was going to say, how we actually, we're totally impressed. <laughs> it's just the, my Noxzema cream. Um, so we actually started with a DOS system that looks like uh -huh. Atari ping pong. Uh -huh. It didn't even have a mouse. Uh -huh. uh, and that was till about 2012. It was um, called Dentech. And Wait, it was embarrassing. 2012. Yeah, and then we switched. So then we switched to Dentrix, uh -huh. um, and because you know we we worked with Shine, they were our supplier. Um, we didn't really know any better, um, and they kind of came in and set us up with all the software, the hardware, mm -hmm. you know, the the maintenance, the the um, uh, Dexas sensors, and before you know it, like you know. Yeah. I don't even know right, how much we right, paid, right, and, right, right. and we're you know um, locked in for you know a for yearly time. contracts. Um, but I, I look at Dentrix, and it's it's like I I'm studying the Torah to try to figure out how to get from A to you can't go from A to B. Right. You got to go from A to Z, and then back to B. Yeah. There's 27 different ways to go and do the same thing. And um, you're constantly clicking around, and um, it can be very o overwhelming. Um, so I like, I think what you, your software or your platforms is more just some kind of simplifying it and making it more user friendly and intuitive. Is is that right? Yes, yeah. and I'm so glad you said that. We're we're super glad you said that because it was intentional to make it very clean looking, uh, very crisp and at the same time, very powerful with all the information right there. And your frustration, Eric, as is, was mine, as is, was still is for a lot of dentists out there, is really within that amount of time for the hygiene check, do we really need to do all that click just to get the information, right? It should just be all there. And we can look at it, we can, then we can really spend that time taking care of the patients and, and really talking about you know, hi, how are you? Okay, Especially yeah. with generations work, right? Because sometimes you have in like multiple generations in the office. Mm -hmm. We wanted something extremely efficient, not frustrating. And on top of all that, this is when you say you go back to the 70s, how about a search feature? Not just with teeth and not with just dates, but how about a search feature in the software where if a patient said, you know, I went to... Mary's wedding in Paris, but can you like almond. Can you search through your notes? Tooth. Yeah, the way that you search through your email. Mm -hmm. But I think what Eric said about like going from Z back to B mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. is really interesting because mm -hmm. the way that you're describing mm -hmm. is how technology works today, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Eric, when you're saying like dead tricks, you have to go from back and forth and back and forth. I mean, it's a super robust system, right? It does a lot. It's powerful, but it's built in a modular way because that's just how technology was back then. You, right. I mean, we didn't have the resources and the know-how to do it any differently, right? Yep. But now in today's world, if you're creating something from scratch and you're building it based off of how we work today, it's completely different, right? Yep. That search feature that Kimberly was talking about, your phone, your email, um, pretty much anything you can search for words in a text message, right? From like two months ago, reference back to something. Um, but we can't do that in our clinical notes. I mean, we can, but like for, for a really, and, and, we're we're proud, and we're proud to say that we're the only one that can. But for yeah. a really long yeah. time, it's only, you can sort by date, you can sort by tooth number, mm -hmm. but you can't yep. search through it the way that you do in your email, which we totally take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the simplification thing that you were talking about, I mean, if you, if you look at your phone, right, it's very, very simple to use. We have, yep. um, we have clients and patients and friends and family who are in there. 60s who can use their phones a lot better than any computer mm -hmm. it's, easy. it's intuitive it yeah yeah but actually if we take a minute to appreciate smartphones the amount of computing power in these things at one point take it back a few decades it would have taken up a small room mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. 
And just because it fits in the palm of your hand, just because you can do things with very few clicks and it's on the surface very simple, that's because it's smart enough to be able to hide the complexities under the hood. I think mm -hmm. if you have really good design, that's the way it should be, right? Yeah, it's just that very clean, modern dress. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we want to make sure. So there's not a lot of information that clutters it. So as a clinician, if somebody's going in to do that hygiene check or as an assistant to put the treatment in, they're not looking at all these things that would just clutter the workflow, but to make it where it is a nice smooth process because it's not something that's antiquated from way back. You, you should have seen me. The other day I was trying to find, in Dentrix, I was trying to find a patient's husband's nice. to see if, uh, chart to see if they had scheduled that implant with me and I couldn't find their uh, next visit, um, the appointment. I, and I've used it since 2012. Uh, and I was looking at it like, where's Waldo? Where's the, uh, you know, where's the button? Because it's so crowded with unused um, functionality and buttons. It's, 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 yeah. it can be very overwhelming. Um, uh, also, you should have seen the, uh, when we went from that DOS system to Dentrix, uh -huh. um, after the first training session, there was staff members crying, oh. um, like holding each other because oh. they were so nervous about like, we're going to get through this together. Yeah. You know, the, 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 you know, people fear change. And yeah. when you're um, practice management software, it's, it's kind of a big deal to, yeah. to switch because that's the heart and soul of the, of the practice. So um, how is the transfer let's say you know my practice has been a, a, a long-standing practice we have you know nine operatories 4500 patients number one what's the data transfer like um to am i gonna fear that i'm gonna lose any data um and number two what is the pay, uh, staff um onboarding process like to get them comfortable with that that with your software so Data conversion is really neat because um, as long as it's there, the data is there, you'll be able to find it somehow. It's just a matter of like figuring out where it, mm -hmm. it's, where it lives, right? So let's say in Dentrix um, box A. So if you think of a practice management software, what you interact with is not what the computer does. In the background, the computer sees like a gigantic Excel spreadsheet is the best way to describe it. So box A in Dentrix might be the patient's first name. And then in Asper Dental, it might be called box 12. So we just need to figure out the names or like where things should link up and then flow the information through. Um, it's more of the case where different practices will use certain fields for things that may be specific to their office. Um, and that's a process of figuring out, okay, like where do you, what do you type in here that should go into our system? So there's no loss of data because your data is, you know, it's, your data. it's physically there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of figuring out where to link it up and which box to put it in. Yeah, I'm not, personally, I'm not so much worried about if I was to switch from, you know, to, to Dent, from Detrix to Aspro Dental. Is it Aspro Dent or Aspro Dental? Aspro Dental. <laughs> Aspro Dental. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not butchering the name of the company. Um, because I'm so used to cloud. I do all my banking through my phone. It's that I have my Netflix account, my Amazon account. Those are all cloud. So I'm not so much concerned about that and the loss of data. Um, what about, let's say my office, um, we, we, uh, purchased your platform, we transferred all the data. How do you help the staff um, onboard them so they're, you know, all in and and they're getting the training that they need? Yeah. So we do we do multi phase trainings. Um, we do groups of you know front office, back office have their own separate trainings, and then we do the whole office all together. Things that everyone will need to know. So for, um, for example, the clinical training will be like how to take an x-ray, how to, you know, renumber a tooth on an x-ray, um, how to add treatment to different priorities and write clinical notes. Um, for the admin team, the front office, things like scheduling appointments, tracking missed and rescheduled appointments, um, setting the office goals, running the reports, and then things for everyone to know are 
we think basic scheduling, the whole team mm -hmm. should know because mm -hmm. um, even if the team is very distinct and they're not meant to be cross-trained, in some offices they aren't, but it's still very helpful. Um, we give the front and back teams a little bit of an overview of what the others mm -hmm. do. So at least the front office knows what the chart page is and where to find mm -hmm. information in the notes if they need to, and things like that. Um, and then we also recognize that you can train in theory and give people homework to practice as much as you want, <laughs> but mm -hmm. nothing compares to when a live patient is there and you're running an actual right. day. So we, we prepare and set the team up for success mm -hmm. to the best of everyone's ability. Um, but when it comes down to it, we have for the first two weeks of going live, we have one of our team members on call for that practice so that they can call with an immediate question like, hey, I knew we did this in training, but how do you change the patient's last name? Like we mistyped it. So, you know, something like that. Yeah, we think it's really, really important because like you were saying at the beginning, that's where people, one, it's new. A lot of people, change is very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. We definitely have to be there for them. And we think that's, that's crucial. In order to make anybody successful mm -hmm. with this, is the experience at the beginning. And I think when people feel like there's somebody there. The psychology of yes. feeling like you are supported, supported. right? That like yeah. you're not yeah. just dropped yeah. into you're a You're not thing. doing this alone. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody there, which is a phone call away, a text away, or even if people want to look it up, they can actually look it up for something. Let's say they're at home and they're like, oh, let me just look it up. Yeah, so and we it, have online tutorials and stuff, mm -hmm. right? So they can, if it's a question that they want to reference real quick, they mm -hmm. can. Um, but our support is by call text mm -hmm. and we you know we can remote in mm -hmm. um but we can also do like a quick video call if someone wants to you know get on a hangouts link or facetime or something like that um that's one of the benefits of cloud based too is that you can easily tap right in and and kind of log in um mm -hmm. remotely yeah um, as opposed to a you know an in-house server yes. um how long does the actual data transfer take is that a matter of hours or days from like a from a legacy system yep um, I'd say it takes a few weeks because first you want to make the make sure the linkages are you know connecting the boxes correctly and then we would do a test conversion and work with the practice to make sure like okay these are the standard where things should go but do you use things in a slightly different way than the standard way and we want to make sure that the data displays the way that your practice is run mm -hmm. um, but that entire time, you're still using the old system um, in your practice. So you're still creating new data, making new appointments, new patients and whatnot without any downtime. And once we figure out, um, once we get the mm -hmm. connection really flush, then we take the latest copy of your data and we can run it through um, overnight. So is it, do you think from start to finish from the time that, you know, you sign the contract to the time you go live is, is a few weeks? Yeah, I'd say three to four. Mm -hmm. And um, so you said that, you know, you have two weeks of someone on call, um, you know, for that first two weeks. What about after? So you said you can you can text or email. Um, you have the yes. online yes. support. Is support ongoing? Support is that is all included? Yeah, yeah, it's all included. The only difference between, um, you know, the first two weeks is we have our team member just like not like literally sitting there waiting for a call, but very much mm -hmm. on call specifically checking yep. in on the practice. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, hey, we didn't hear from you today. How is, how is it going? Mm -hmm. um, after those two weeks, we're still there, but we found that a lot of practices are humming oh, along yes. really well. <laughs> and that if we ask them how it's going, they actually, they're like, they it's going yes. fine, yeah. can you stop bugging <laughs> us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we let people live. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like you're, you're uh, you know, your classic um, treatment chart page is, is including the perio, um, yeah. the restorative, uh, the x-rays, everything's right on there. What um, are some of the other key functionalities that um, your platform um, has to offer that is, you know, a step up from like, uh, like one of the older Dentrix or uh, older platforms? I think one of the things is, you know, we were talking about value, especially if you're a new dentist, right? So if, let's say, Eric, if you and I were the new dentist today coming in and we just bought an office, right? And it's server-based and we wanted to send text messages. Well, we would need to go out and buy something that sent text message, right? 
and then that's like a saying, separate program yes like a separate program I so, think so now you on. have to log into a different platform yes. to send out your messages right and then Got let's it. say for instance if we decide we want to be able to send uh, health Con history or consent or consents we would have to buy a different package from another vendor so now all these layering on so by the time you layer all that on that becomes quite costly. Mm, it adds up because yes. you're paying for this guy and this right. one and that one. Oh, that's that's us right now. Oh, I have well, third party, yes. third party mm -hmm. softwares up the wazoo. I don't even know what half of them do, and they probably do the same thing. And I'm oh, well, got it. Eric. That's the thing. A lot of yes. them overlap because if your yeah. if all your company does is electronic consents, then eventually you might go, oh, okay, well maybe we should now do reminders too. But you have a company that only does reminders, but they also do texting. So now you have to do you get two vendors that kind of overlap, but you're still paying both of them because you want this tiny module and that tiny module. And then everybody's going <laughs> into your server to be able to right. Answer the information, right. right? So as much of a frustration and is is for the dentist in the back when we have to do multiple clicks, right? The same frustration happens up in the front office ladies because they're mm -hmm. also they're going from the software, whatever it may be, um, to going to, let's say, for instance, a third party, you know, to be able to read the text, to be able to read whatever it is that the patient is sending back. So what we did was we added a lot of that right into Ask for Dental. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, the health history, if you want it, especially during this COVID time, the health history, a new patient comes on, we yeah. can send a health history, they can fill it out in the comfort of their home then send it back. It's auto-populated into the software. So mm -hmm. the team doesn't really have to do anything. You can also do a COVID screening. So yes. along right. the health history, yes. you can add um, one of those COVID yes. uh, yep. screenings yep. and also any other consent forms too. Yes. And then let's and say then, for instance, they come in and now you have a treatment plan for them. So let's mm -hmm. say they're in a hurry and they cannot stay. Well, you can certainly send that treatment plan to them and they can sign it. it, sign it. So all the consents, and all the financials are signed even before they come in. So that helps with, especially during this COVID time, you don't want patients coming in. You don't want them to have to, you know, pick up the pen uh, or sign on the Actually, computer. You know what's so funny? all of that is done. So all that layering is as much as we can, we put it into Ask for Dental because now we created value for the dentist. Especially so is, is, is all of that in like a, a portal for the patient where they they don't have to log yeah. into anything because yeah. okay it's think about it um if you are the patient right do you want one more password to remember mm -hmm. one more thing to log into um probably not mm -hmm. so we send it out as to your email with a link it's a secure link mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can fill it all out and it goes directly back into the practice management software mm -hmm. without you having to sign into it or download anything extra as the patient and then the other thing I want to mention is the text. And the text is really important, not just from a point of easier patient communication, right? That we all know. But years ago, long, long ago. When oh, I in, her, in my, her past <laughs> life, she was an auditor. I was a dental mm -hmm. auditor. So <laughs> at the beginning of my career, I got a chance to Orange County, Los Angeles County, and San Diego County were my territories. So I was in, oh gosh, at least a dozen offices um, as far as every few weeks. And when we do this, dentists are wonderful as clinicians, but sometimes we're not as great as far as being good about notes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the front team. Now the beauty about the text messages is everything in the text message, it's safe. It also yeah. as basically notes, right? So something funny should happen. So there was a client who the husband said, I don't, I don't have any pain anymore. Oh, cancel yes. my, my appointment. And the wife, you know, basically said, cancel my husband's appointment. It was a prepaid appointment. So that office refunded the money for that, the dental work and they went away. And all of a sudden this office gets a letter from the board. And basically, they're trying to figure out if this office really didn't do something they were supposed to do. But the beauty about it is it's in there. It's in the tech that the wife canceled the appointment because my husband is no longer in pain and the office refunded the money. So easily enough, 
sent this out to the board, everything disappears. So this is something, especially for our young dentists as they're beginning their career, is we got to make sure that we protect the dentist and their team. This is huge for us. And being um, an auditor, this is something where I know, and you know, that most dentists really try to do the right thing, right? Really, really try to do the right thing. And then on the other hand, though, sometimes we spend so much time with patients, you can't dot all the I's and you can't cross all the T's. So it's just one more thing that we built in to make sure that we protect the dentist. So that is something that we think that's very important in there. So all those text messages um, and emails go into the notes as a paper trail. Um, so you have a record of it. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what about communication? Um, so can we text the patient back or email the patient yeah. back? Can you make appointments through Yes. Text or email? So right now we have the patients can text, you can text out to your patient, you know, like, how are you doing after a procedure? Mm -hmm. And they can answer you, letting you know, you know, if they're still numb or if they want to make another post-op appointment, things like that. Um, they can send in pictures. So let's say patient fell and cracked a tooth. You can snap, they can snap a photo and send it to you. That way you can triage before they come in. Um, mm -hmm. That picture goes into their documents tab on the uh, on the chart so that you have it for reference for the future um, mm -hmm. and so that communication we see a ton of um, especially right now and then for the online booking that's something that we're working on as well so it's in our pipeline and we're really excited we have the design mock-ups and we're um, we're hoping to have that out within early next year and is the the messaging back is that all HIPAA compliant um, Yes. Through like if say a patient took a it's almost like a little teledentistry like they take a picture of their tooth yes and they text it to the office and I can see it it goes right to their chart mm -hmm. and then I can you know either call the patient yes. or text them back um, yeah. so that's that's pretty cool yeah and that's very important to us the whole thing that you said about HIPAA compliance because during mm -hmm. when we were doing our search for to be able to switch to cloud what we have found was some weren't. And that was a big, you know, so that's like right off the bat that that was not going to, that was a deal breaker, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. It must be HIPAA compliant. Yeah. What about communication within the office? Can, um, is there a way for me to communicate with the staff? Can they communicate with me? Like the assistant can ping me that the patient's here or is there any intra-office communication that, that the, the platform offers? I, right now, if we can do it by a way of texting, right? Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, for instance, if you're, you know, you're back there and you're wearing your smartphone and then the mm -hmm. team sends you a text, so absolutely that can be done. So it's something where, and some will use it and some won't, but if you wanted to do it that way. And then for one client in particular that I'm thinking of, they have different locations. So what they will do is they will communicate with yep. their other location via text right on the system, right? Mm -hmm. Without having to pick up the phone. And let's say for instance, they might say, oh, you know, um, let's say they sent one patient for a root canal um, to one location, but that patient belongs to location in Boston, the other one mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a, a different city, then they can be able to communicate like that. So we've seen our clients do that. Yeah, I mean, personally, I don't even like talking on the phone I'd rather text yeah. yes, yes. Um, and, um, <laughs> and if someone is calling me yeah. uh, usually it's spam so <laughs> I would yeah. rather text and you know the the studies show that people will respond to a text more than right, a phone call right. and even an email yes. um, and it's you know that's what the, especially Millennials want now they want that engagement on their smartphone um, so that looks, you know, impressive to, to patients and it's also what they want. They want that instant gratification of that, of that text message right, right to their phone. So that's, that's pretty cool. And, you know, when you um, talk about millennials, they, they want things convenient. They will, they feel like they should and rightly so be able to access their information anywhere. Right, they want because they're used to that. They don't even think twice about that. But even the presentation of information, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. what you were saying, um, 
Eric earlier was not being able to find stuff on Dentrix, like so many cramped little Mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I think that is a big change in Mm -hmm. technology as well, because up until a certain point, there was this view of information, like the more, the better. Mm -hmm. But I think as we've gotten inundated with Mm -hmm. so much information in the past decade we started to realize it's more about the quality of the information Mm -hmm. and yeah and being able to find what you need but Mm -hmm. not necessarily have everything raining down on you right so that was a big part of our streamlining Mm -hmm. the interface Mm -hmm. where we took out a lot of the clutter so that when you are looking for something it's really what you want to see Mm -hmm. um and that is the convenience Mm -hmm. factor Mm -hmm. yeah because you don't have to scan so much is it customizable can can uh can a practice customize their, you know, what they're looking at? Um, let's say, um, you know, I, let, I do a lot of implants in my office or let's say, you know, we have a, we have a periodontist and an endodontist, but let's say it's a more heavy endo office. Um, uh, can you customize um, certain parts of the, the software to, to your particular practice? Yeah, there's some, there's definitely some customization. So mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. And I think it's, and this is where software gets tricky because I think everybody works a little bit differently. Yeah. So what we try to do is if definitely there's some customization and at the same time, if we have a whole group of clients that really nudges us like, this is what we want to see. Where yeah. the beauty about having our own dev team and being very close with them is things can get done very, yeah. you know, pretty quickly. Um, and the other thing too is as we're building in we're talking about online scheduling. So sure, we can reach out to a vendor and that has done it and add it onto the software. And mm-hmm. at the same time, we find out, you know, a little like, oh, it might be easier if you just put it in yourself because it's not that hard to do. And not then- hard to build. Because right now there are so many, um, I mean, when you're developing something, you don't necessarily need to create something from scratch unless you're a pure R&D shop. Most of the things have already been created somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of pulling the best of what's out there into our creation. Mm-hmm. And I think we're at a really good point because our team is, they're young, they're mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a lot of experience. So when we're, when we're looking at things to add and things to implement, we get to go off of actual live feedback from our mm-hmm, clients. Mm-hmm. So people who are actually using it day in, day out, get a say in what they want to see, which we think is really cool. Cause when, I mean, when we were searching, that was, that wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Dentrix, I mean, I don't know how many, I, I could rant about Dentrix for hours. So, <laughs> um, I mean, you well, could well, text say, message uh, them, go yeah. ahead. I was gonna say softnet's not any better. So just you know, and and yeah, and that's the thing is I think these companies have gotten so large, so huge, yeah. have so much market share that perhaps it's they you don't know, have they to, don't yeah. they don't have to, and then it doesn't it's no longer personal in a way where they care enough, right? Because now it's well, like well, I could send them you know feedback you know every hour on the hour, and nothing would get done. I mean. They have so many thousands of of users that for anything to get done, it would have to be such a majority of users that um, uh, could could make a change. Um, like like I've been trying to on the chart because I do a lot of implants. I would love to be able to right click on that implant and have all the implant information mm-hmm. pop up, like the, the platform, the implant um, like company, you're, you're using, yeah, the abutment, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but certain things like you will never get done in Dentrix. So that's, that's pretty cool. Like you're a younger growing company and you're more, you want to hear that feedback. Um, and I think um, notes, like what you're saying. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I have like, I, I could go on and on. It. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. yeah. Yeah. Because what um, you're saying makes a whole lot of sense to us because if you want it, I'm pretty sure just about, almost everybody out there who's placing an implant would want the same thing, right? I have to go to the photos, then back to the chart, then back to the ledger to see when it was done, then back to that note to see what, it's like, uh, it's like a, a like connect, like a crime scene, like with the, <laughs> trying to the figure dots. out, like <laughs> connect the dots. Yeah, I have like the little <laughs> red push pins with the red string to trying to figure out um, when I place that implant. Um, so um, now, are, are, are all these um, 
these ex uh, like so you, you're going to be doing um, online scheduling soon, and I'm sure you're going to be you know um, as a growing company, you're going to be do, adding a lot of these functionalities. Is that still part of the package? Like, am I going to have to pay more per each um, functionality you add, or is it going to be like a all-inclusive resort where I can you know just show up to the buffet and eat? Like, it's all like part of the package. Everything that we add that our team can do internally is going to be part of the package because mm -hmm. I mean, what, where would we be if we're not constantly innovating, right? Um, but anything that we may have to partner up with somebody else to do, then mm -hmm. it might be a conversation of, okay, how much are they charging in order yeah. to make it happen? But, you know, we would try our very best to do everything where it's like when your phone is upgraded, it's yeah. part of it. Right. Or right? like, so your... that, that is, that is definitely our goal mm -hmm. because it's not your dentist for us. It started in the dental office. And so we're not interested in nickel and diming the dentist mm -hmm. out there because we've seen so many people do that. And again, we don't want to see, you know, dentists, especially the new ones that, um, that you're trying to help. All right. Where it's like layering platforms, third parties, mm -hmm. And by the time you add it all up, they're paying a whole lot more. We want somebody that's brand new, be able to get a laptop, have a phone, and it's ready to go. Yeah. Forget the server costs, forget all of that. Server's right? what, like five, seven thousand yeah. dollars? Yeah. So then that we have this enormous server that's just collecting dust under and it's like, I mean, it's the thing is huge um, underneath one of the, the you know the staff members' desks. Um, so um, it'd be nice to. I hope, she I hope she's not, not super tall. Yeah, I hope she's not a tall person. Well, it's it's like I mean, no when, when the fan goes off on that thing, it's like there's a helicopter, you know, in the room. Um, so, what about support um, moving forward? Um, is that is that all included as well? Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, any software updates. Um, but what if I'm having an issue? Because. Um, no Ultimately, um, like I love technology when it works, but when it doesn't, yes. I, I can barely screw in a light bulb. So I will be calling support for help. Um, so how does that work? Is that, is that included as well? That's part of the on-demand support that we were talking about. We think, mm -hmm. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's we care about the office being able to run really well. So it's one thing to have a program that works really well, but it's all about the implementation and how it's actually being used. So without good support, I don't think you can be a really strong software company because there will always be something, yeah. you know, yeah. whether it's, I forgot how to do this or, you know, I accidentally deleted that. It's just, you know, yeah, just people like are our, people. Yeah, and just like our clients, right? With any dentist, any good dentist and any good dental office, you want them to have, you want the patient to have a wonderful patient experience. Right. And it's no different. Right? Yeah, you're not going to be yeah. like, oh, we won't take your call about that yeah. feeling because, because it was what, done over two yeah, years ago. Right. I mean, what kind of, that, you know, what kind of experience mm -hmm. would that be? These are yeah, our it's all, we it's all about that repeat them. business. Yeah. yeah. These are our clients. We care about them. I mean, if we're listening and what you said about Dantrix, mm -hmm. we don't want somebody saying that about Asper Dental, right? right? Like, you have it but you're not happy and you've been on with them for a long time. You've paid them a great deal of money over the years. Are they treating you the way you should be treated? Would we ever treat our patients who've been a patient of ours for five years, 10 years, 20 years? Would we ever treat our patients like that as dentists? And I think we would say, no, no way. Absolutely not. And would they refer to us? Absolutely not. So we don't want to be a tech company. Asper Dental wants to be a company the way dentists want to treat their patients for many, many generations. And to mm -hmm. us, that's important. So. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's just like, like you're saying in, in patient care, you want to take care of that patient so they're happy. Mm -hmm. You want to offer them great customer service so they come back and they refer their friends. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it's, it's very um, similar to uh, like, a, like a startup um, uh, practice management software. Um, but I also wanted to mention that, you know, something new and exciting like this, like for, for me, you know, going from um, taking, you know, regular impressions to getting a digital scanner was like, 
it made me enjoy dentistry so much more or going from paper film to digital um, x-rays. Um, so something like this, you know, to get a new practice management software and get rid of an old dinosaur, you know, like a Dentrix or um, um, some of the older legacy systems can, can be exciting and reinvigorating for the practice, the staff, um, the dentist. I mean, the dentist, uh, you know, we go through, um, you know, such a day-to-day -day stressful job. Um, and, lines, right? <laughs> yeah, and you want it to be, you want to go to work happy and something yeah. exciting and new and efficient. Yeah. So if, if a software like this can, can do that and make you enjoy your practice, make your staff happier, make things more efficient. And then it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a no brainer. Um, so I would love to get a, um, a demo or you could even um, for this, you know, the video portion of this podcast, we could um, even get some screenshots or maybe a little demo going at the end. Um, but before we, you know, wrap things up, any last nuggets or words of wisdom that you want to tell those young dentists out there or, or about Aspro Dental? I think, um, I think for me, it's about keep learning. You know, when you mm -hmm. finish dental school, that's just the beginning. Uh, be excited about the future because the future is wonderful. Continue to, and then focus, focus on what you really want to do. And, um, and in the end, it's, it's about the patient. You deliver the experience um, that you, you can very rarely do you get to create somebody's experience. And in a dental office, you truly can. You can curate the whole experience. And we started our offices from scratch. We did not have the luxury of buying. So way back when, it was one patient at a time, one front team office member, one dentist, and you grow and you go through three generations, four generations later, because you always remember it's one patient at a time. Just like with us, with Aspro Dental, it's one client at a time. You make them happy and it spreads. So just you know, keep learning, keep giving value, and um, keep giving those wonderful experiences. And I think as a young dentist today, oh, how fun and exciting, so. Oh, that's great advice. All right, well, thanks so much for joining. I Thank think that was- you. Um, What you're uh, doing is great. I mean, we, we really think what you're doing for the young dentist is wonderful. So thank you for doing that for the young dentist. Wish you were around when I was a young dentist too. <laughs> I know, there's so many things that, you know, cause I've been practicing almost 20 years that I wish I knew or I wish were around back then, but you know, it, you know, so that's why I, you know, having, you know, a, a young innovative company on, you know, like yourself that can help young dentists is, is so important to, to help them and show them that, you know, they can really enjoy dentistry and um, give great patient care. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, it's a stressful job, yes. but if you can, if you can get some, technology, you know, like an Aspro Dental that can make your, jo your job and your practice more efficient, then you're going to have more time to spend with patient care um, and, you know, just in general, be happier and less stress at the end. Um, so again, I want to thank uh, Tiffany Wen, Kimberly Wen uh, from Aspro Dental. You can go to Deals for Dentists and get 30% off the implementation fees, two months of free subscription and unlimited on-demand support. So that's great. So yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And um, let's, let's so be in touch maybe in the next six months or year and see what's new in your world. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. And we would love to, if you want your audience to see a demo, we'd love to come back and uh, you know, we'd love to be able to do that for them. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you for having us. Take care. 